Good evening, everyone. I'm Christiane Amanpour, and welcome to the program. It is one of the great humanitarian tragedies of our time, the civil war in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which has left an estimated 5 million people dead. It's been seven years since a peace deal was signed and rebel militias began disarming. And it's nearly four years since landmark elections made Joseph Kabila the first freely elected president in decades. And yet, literally millions of people in eastern Congo are still brutalized by the conflict. Rape persists as a weapon of war. The UN estimates 160 women are raped every week by armed groups and especially by the Congolese army itself. And the fighting goes on for most part out of sight and out of mind. It often takes high profile people to remind us of a massive injustice. And today, the film star Ben Affleck launches the Eastern Congo Initiative to raise money and awareness and also to lobby governments for help. He has just returned from there and he joins us now from Los Angeles. Ben Affleck, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. What made you take up this cause? Why Congo? Well, as you explained, obviously it's a tremendous uh, humanitarian crisis. And, uh, you know, I began, uh, I had heard about it briefly. I was shocked that I didn't know more about it. And uh, I started traveling there to learn about it because while I wanted to take up the cause, I was really insecure about being a kind of celebrity dilettante getting involved. And uh, this was about three or four years ago. And the more I traveled, the more I was struck by it, the more I fell in love with the people, the more I was horrified by what was happening. And, uh, and I just, you know, started to want to learn about what was happening there. And the more I did, I started to develop this idea of uh, partnering with mm -hmm. the Congolese people and wanting to empower community-based organizations there that were doing extraordinary work. Well, uh, let me get to that in a minute, because that's your Eastern yeah. Congo initiative. So briefly, yeah. tell me, what, do, what does that mean, community-based partnerships? Precisely how? Well, you know, what oftentimes we don't see uh, in the pictures in the media um, are, is the fact that uh, there are so many of these organizations uh, throughout Africa, but particularly, as I've seen, in, in eastern Congo, that despite this extraordinary crisis are doing uh, immeasurable good and uh, overcoming extraordinary odds in eastern Congo. There are folks who are working to uh, protect those who are suffering from gender-based violence, who help... Uh, uh, child soldiers to, um, you know, advance the educational needs of the citizens there. They're people who live in the communities, who are from there, who understand the relationships there, and who are really, um, you know, Africans finding solutions to African problems. And when I was there, what I saw was that those were, in my view, the most uh, effective folks at, at, at meeting those uh, goals. I want to play some video that, that you shot, your people shot there, and, and you've sent it to us. And it's you going to a prison and what happens in in the prison and I want to I want you to describe it a little bit you're going in and you're, you I think you're talking to the prisoners and then a scuffle breaks out yeah this is the Goma prison which is you know I think not not uh, not a place you want to find yourself uh, imprisoned it's in eastern Congo it's the only main prison there in the city it's madly overcrowded and 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 quite miserable I was there uh, looking at causes of gender-based violence, interviewing some rapists, in fact, and then, you know, this was one of several incidents that uh, took place there, and, uh, you know, it just, it wasn't really dealt with. It just seemed like just, you know, quite common, in and, fact. And and, uh, when, when you say you were interviewing them, what was, what was the purpose of that? Obviously, rape is one of the, the most terrible consequences of even still now, even though there's meant to have been a peace accord, democratic elections. It's really a, a terrible, terrible problem. The UN has appalling statistics about what goes on there. What were you trying to get out of those prisoners there? I was trying to find out a couple of things. One, um, you know, because impunity is such a, a, an issue there, I was trying to find out uh, who, if anyone, was in fact convicted. Um, and two, uh, trying to get to the bottom of this sort of culture. Uh, everybody asks, uh, well, what's going on? Why is this happening? Why, are so, why has this become such a prevalent cultural norm? And no one could provide any answers to that. And um, so uh, I, in partnership with some other organiz uh, of these local organizations there, kind of set out to find some answers about that. Mm -hmm. And we, we also have a picture of uh, Laba Kamana. Tell me about her woman, what, uh, sorry, her story about this woman. 
This is a woman who worked with one of the organizations that we at ECI um, want to partner with, and this is emblematic of exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about. It's not uh, aid in the traditional sense. We want to set up a partnership with this group, LAV, which is a, a French acronym for Let Africa Live. These folks um, uh, have helped this woman. She was taken prisoner by the FDLR, which is the former... Um, it's a bit of a long story, but the former group that caused the genocide in Rwanda, they're now the principal militia in Congo. They took her prisoner three years ago. They, in her words, treated her like an animal and a slave. She was a bush uh, wife to six men who raped her. She became pregnant. She uh, eventually escaped by asking basically permission to take a bath and me uh, making a mad run for it. She barely escaped with her life. She walked for uh, a week and made it back to the city. She was homeless, pregnant, destitute in the city. She uh, uh, was discovered by uh, folks from this organization. They took her in. They brought her into this community. Um, they teach basically trade. Uh, they teach you a trade like, you know, carpentry and auto mechanics and sewing and that kind of thing. But even more, they sort of bring you into a community and sort of bring folks back, former child soldiers and the like. She is now, uh, when she spoke to us, she was going to law school. She wanted to teach, uh, uh, she wanted to practice law uh, 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 to, pr mm -hmm. to protect women's rights. So She's an extraordinary woman, and that was the kind of group that we want to partner with and support so that we can broaden their capacity to right. do more. So that she can go and try to, I guess, make more women aware of their rights and try to end this culture of impunity. When you look at all the issues that you, you, you studied and you, you confronted there, what do you think is the most important for you to want to focus on in terms of really trying to affect change? Well, I think the reason why we established this initiative the way uh, we did, I really see that you, um, it's important to kind of do top down and bottom up. That's why we want to do uh, grassroots grant making as well as uh, a sort of top down um, advocacy so that you can do kind of cause and effect because if you're just putting band-aids on something, it has the potential to go on forever and you're just catching water at the bottom mm -hmm. of a waterfall. So we want to do policy making both at the United States level and at the international level and at the local African country level, um, you know, the United States really needs to develop a comprehensive policy towards uh, Congo as a whole, much in the same way it did toward uh, Sudan in late 2009, mm -hmm. which it doesn't have toward eastern Congo, d despite uh, what a sort of uh, and, mess the place is. And I think that's really the, the smartest approach. Right. And you, you've spoken to others about using, you, you talked about being a celebrity doing this, but well, you've spoken to others about the currency of celebrity. I don't have uh, any audio. Have I lost you, Ben? Can you still hear me? Do you know what? We're going to go to a break and we'll come back with Ben Affleck afterwards. And next we will be back, as I said, with Ben Affleck to look at what the world is doing and not doing to stop the war in eastern Congo.